Hey guys, Chris here, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to install a new rear main cover, a new rear main seal on a C506, specifically my 2004 commemorative edition. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I have a really large oil leak on the back of the engine, and I suspect that the rear main seal and maybe the, also the rear main cover are the cause of this huge leak. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I am gonna show you how to do it without removing the bell housing. Um, which I think will make it a little bit easier by not having to take that off because it's pretty difficult to get the bell housing off of the engine. So let's go ahead and get started. I wonder how many years of gunk this is. Some of it's really, really caked on. Starting to get a little cleaned up there. It does kind of look like right here at the bottom of the seal. That does kind of look like where everything starts. But if you also look over here, the edge of the cover plate, uh, I could see that maybe that's leaking. So now I've already cleaned a lot of the oil up. These bolts here are 10 millimeter. Go ahead and take all them out. And then the last, the topmost four of them, it looks like I need a wrench to get those out. So I'm gonna, all right, now I got a 10 millimeter wrench to get these ones that are way up here. This might be kind of challenging to get with such a small wrench. I'm going to guess that the rear main cover is leaking in addition to the seal because if you look up in here, like there's a lot of oil and stuff around the side here and over here. So I would think that that would mean the cover is leaking and maybe not just the seal, maybe it's a combination of the two, but rear main seal is one of those things that if you're going to take the car apart to do the clutch, you're going to do the rear main seal while you're in here. Those top three bolts, they won't come out with the bell housing on. So I think I'm going to have to take the bell housing off. Um, but there's two bolts on the bell housing I wasn't able to get off the other day. But I just realized that if I, if you just push up on the bell housing, the engine... Uh, will move up a lot. So I pushed up on the bell housing and I have now gotten a swivel socket and nine inches of extension in there and a ratchet. So I should be able to get at that bolt now. And then the other one is up there, which should be a little bit easier to get to. So I might be able to get the bell housing off after all. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a 13 millimeter socket, and then I have a swivel head, a six inch extension, a three inch extension, and then I have an adapter so I could use my half inch drive wrench. And what I had to do was jack up the engine about, I don't know, that's about an inch or so. But the engine's super light when it's like this. All I gotta do is just push on it. So we'll get this out. Right, I've loosened the top bolt up there, but I've just, I haven't taken them out because I want to see if I just loosen it, if that's enough clearance to get these out. Because I feel like these bolts that are really hard to get to will be a real bitch to get them back in. So I'm gonna see if I can just loosen the bell housing and not take them all the way out. And then that'll probably make my life a lot easier. All right, sweet. Just one more. If I can get this out without having to take the bell housing completely off, I will be very happy. Haha. -ha. Great success. Now, so all the top bolts are out. Now I just have to get these smaller or these lower bolts out. All right, one. All right. So this should just come off now, I would think. Oh yeah. Honestly, it seems like a lot of my problem is just from these two bolts here. 
So when you're doing this, make sure you take these two bottom bolts out. I wonder if a lot of oil is going to Get a 10 millimeter. So, there we go. There we go. That, that did it. Take this out here. Here it comes. Slowly but surely. There we go. There we go. Okay, it's free. There's the rear main cover, and then this right here is the rear main seal. And then this gasket, there's a gasket up here that has to come out. And that's what it looks like up there with the... So you can see there's a gasket in there that I'm also going to replace. So I have the rear main cover off now, and I'm going to check it for to make sure it's flat and not warped or distorted. Um, because I've I saw a few things in the forum that said that they can become distorted. So I've got some some things I can use as straight edges, and I'm gonna go ahead and see. Just looking at it, it looks okay, and it's actually pretty thick. I mean, that's like I don't know a quarter inch thick aluminum, so it's pretty thick. But I'll check it with some straight edges and then see what I get. It looks all right, I guess. Hard to tell. But, I mean, it seems like it's all right. Uh, so I'm just going through and cleaning some stuff up, and I wanted to show you the uh, the inspection plate for the bottom of the bell housing, and you can see how caked in oil it is. Like, it's literally just caked in this stuff. So. I think the rear main seal has been leaking for quite a while. All right, today I'm going to be installing uh, the new rear main cover and the rear main seal on the back of my Z06 here. First thing you got to do is go through and clean up any oil. So clean the mating surface here where the gasket goes and then clean up any excess oil. Okay, here's the rear main cover I'm going to use. It's a, it's a, I got a whole new cover. The reason being is that the original factory cover has a 10 millimeter bolt head for each of these bolts. This upgraded one has a 13 millimeter bolt head, which should give better clamping and less chance of leaking. So I also think this bottom flange here is a little wider. So I got a new upgraded GM Performance rear main cover and I have a new rear main seal. So I just have to get the cover ready. Here's the original one. Go ahead and uh, put this together. Uh, you have to install it first with no seal get it centered and then you go ahead and put the seal on it. So I think this bolt on the left is one of the original ones which was a 10 millimeter head. The new one's a 13 millimeter. You can see there the new design is a little bit bigger bolt head with a little bit bigger of a flange against it. Better clamping, less chance for leaks. Okay so take the rear main cover, put your new gasket on it and you could use a couple of the bolts to help hold the gasket in place. Now that we're under here, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up both surfaces. So mainly uh, the back of the block, clean that up really well, wipe down any oil. And then I'm going to go ahead and just wipe down the back of the, of the cover. And then I could go ahead and set it in there and then hand tighten the bolts down. This is a good time to mention if you've taken the rear galley plug out for any reason, Make sure you put that back in before you install this rear main cover. Now the next step is to put a little bit of RTV. Uh, there's two places you want to put RTV. You want to put it in these corners here. So you put it in this corner here, right where the oil pan and the block and the cover meet. You want to put some RTV there. And then the same thing on the other side where the block, the oil pan, and then the cover meet. So just a little bit, bit of RTV here and a little bit of RTV there, and then we're ready to put the cover on. And then the RTV we're going to use is this Permatex Ultra Black, which is uh, the one that has the most amount of oil resistance. We're just going to take a little bit of that, and you're just going to squirt it in both of these corners here. And the same thing on the other side. We'll go ahead and put the cover on. Now 
And then we'll get a couple of these bolt holes started here just so we can sort of hold it in place. These are now again, these are 13 millimeters. So these are a larger, larger socket than the 10 millimeters that we took off. So you just kind of want to get this a little bit hand tight here. Okay, all the bolts are started now. Um, now I'm going to go through and just tighten them down. You want them to be just about hand tight uh, before the next step. So, and also these top bolts, although it seems like they won't go in, uh, they will. There's there's enough room with the bell housing on to get those topmost bolts in. And you also want to put in these really long bolts that go on the bottom because you want to help pull it down. So. To clean out that out as best you can. Okay, so we just got those started. Go ahead, and just get these hand tight. So, got these two bottom long bolts in that pulls the cover down now. Just gotta go through and tighten, not tighten, but hand tighten all these little ones, all these other ones. And there's a lot of them, unfortunately, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. And you know, kind of do it like you would expect in, in like a crisscross pattern. So once you get all these bolts up here done, tightened, go down and snug up these 10, 10 millimeter down here. These are the, the long skinny bolts. I'll go ahead and get those tightened up. Now with the bolts snug here, these should be pretty snug. And these bottom ones should be pretty snug. Now we got to go ahead and install our align it tool. So this will help center the rear main cover around the crankshaft there and that will help get the uh, rear main seal installed correctly so you take this thing put a little there's a there's an o-ring on the outside there's an o-ring on the inside so you go ahead and put a little bit of oil on those so they slide in okay put oil around the outside Put oil around the inside. Now that I've got these all snug down, go ahead and take the tool and install it. Put it in here. Should line up pretty freely, and then just sort of, and then just sort of hit it into place. Push it in place here. Feels like it's pretty well aligned. Okay. It's kind of got like a nice little clunk when it goes in. What we can now do is go ahead and torque down these 13 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna do a half sequence. They're supposed to go to 18 foot pounds. So we'll do 10 foot pounds. We want to do an inch pound, so we want to do 120 inch pounds first. So take my little baby torque wrench here. I'm going to do it staggered just to uh, help it seat better. So do 120 inch pounds, which is not uh, 10 pound feet, and then we'll go do the full 18. So start on the bottom here. And we'll go over and do this bolt. Okay. And we'll kind of just do a little bit like a star pattern. We'll go up near the top and we'll do one. I think I need a long 13 millimeter. Okay. We'll go back and we'll do this one here. 
I'm not really sure how I'm going to torque down these top bolts. Might have to do, just do these ones based on the feel. So now we've torqued them all to 120 inch pounds, which is 10 foot pounds. Now I'm going to go through with my bigger torque wrench and torque them to 18 foot pounds, which is the final torque. Now we just have to get the top ones. These only didn't need much. They only needed like half a turn. So not even. They needed like a quarter turn. So I think I'm just gonna see if I can come here and just uh, put a quarter turn on all these. What I did was I torqued all these ones with my torque wrench, and then these top four I can't get a torque wrench in there because of the bell housing so I'm just kind of estimating it if I put my wrench on this one the ones that are torqued I can't even move them if I just lightly pull on it I can't even move those so I'm just basically just taking these top four and getting them to tight enough where I can't move them I don't think the top torque though matters so much because if something's going to leak it's not going to leak at the top right it's going to leak at the bottom top ones seem okay we'll go around and check all these again all those ones are torqued 18 foot pounds now that all the 13 millimeter bolts on the cover are torqued we got to come down here and torque these bottom two and these get torqued to 104 inch pounds with your 10 millimeter socket. You want to torque these two down. Okay. So now the rear cover is completely installed. We can go ahead and remove the tool. All right. Wipe off the oil and stuff from it. Now the cover is perfectly aligned and installed. The last step is to put in the uh, rear main seal. That, now before we put the rear main seal in, the seal is supposed to go in dry. So go to the crank here and wipe up any oil, which was we just put on it because we had the alignment tool in here. So just go in and wipe up any oil. And then here's the seal. The important thing about this is it says on it, it has to go in a special way. So it says on it right here, it says this side out. That is the side that faces outwards from the engine. So this side out goes up here like this. And then what we're going to do is use the align it tool to push it in place. Again, also this seal goes in dry. You don't put any oil or anything on it. Wipe down the tool again here a little bit. And then you just uh, put the tool here on the end of this. And then you just start pressing it into place. Um, get a like a rubber mallet or something here. And just lightly tap the seal. Oopsie daisy. Uh, just lightly tap the seal in place. Okay. Let's take your time. That looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's really hard to see under here. It's dark and just gonna. So I pretty much just tap it in until it's flush with everything. Feels like it could use a little bit more right there. Okay, 
and that seems like that's it. That feels like it's in pretty flush, so you just want the seal to be flush with the cover here. So it, it feels like it's pretty flush. And uh, that's what it should look like when it's installed. Now the rear main cover should be perfectly centered with the crank. And this seal should be perfectly centered with the crank. Uh, so there should not be any leaks. Uh, but time will tell. I'll have to get the car back together and run the engine first before I can see it. But that is what the finished product looks like. Alright, so a little update here. I've driven the car about 750 miles since I've put it all back together. Um, and you can see here, right underneath where the rear main seal and the rear main cover is, is pretty much completely leak free. So, um, replacing that rear main cover and rear main seal did seem to fix the leak on the back of my engine. So, just wanted to give a little update after driving the car for a little bit to, to, show, uh, to show the end result. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and have a good night.